When I think of the 4th of July, I think about last year reading about Thomas Jefferson and his autobiography by uh, Meacham, I believe. Such a fascinating book. I mean, this guy was a part of it. He was in his 30s and he fought for the Constitu fought for uh, America's um, uh, freedom back in 1776 or so, 17, 1770s to the 1780s or so. I don't think it got, uh, you know, I don't know the dates exactly. But what I do remember is, I mean, there's certain periods that points that stood out in the book where he talked about how they immediately started celebrating July 4th. And I mean, they celebrated it knowing and experiencing the whole scenario of, of fighting for their independence. There, there are people who wanted to live another day to make it to July, the next July 4th. There was one guy in particular, I think he, he lived into the early 1800s, and he wanted to just see one more July 4th, but unfortunately he died like a, a week before. But one of the guys who had so much pride in, in what they accomplished securing freedom from England that they really didn't hold back their celebrations at the time. But now the, the meaning seems kind of lost to us with the age of the internet and communicating directly with England. Any one of us can communicate with somebody in England from our bedrooms. And it, it's, it just seems a little, um, I don't know, rude or whatever to snub our noses at England so much. I mean, what are the chances they try to take us over nowadays? Back in the old days, they had different ideals, and and uh, just it was a race to to win America, to get, cover it as much as possible. I mean, when they won independence, the Pacific wasn't even really explored yet, only by ship. It wasn't until 1800 when Lewis and Clark went walked across, and that was only you know one trail to Oregon, and then back. So they didn't they didn't get to see all of America. They didn't they didn't understand what they only plotted what they could see. They they just covered the rivers they could hit, the Columbia. And that's that was it. But yeah, it's it to me it seems like the uh the meaning of the 4th of July is, has changed from the time that it was that they actually fought the revolution till now. I mean, if you ask anybody on the street what they know about the details that went into, that, that occurred during the the revolution, not many people would know. I didn't realize in the detail until I read Thomas Jefferson's book. I really want to read George Washington's too, I never got around to that. He was a, he was, there was a big age difference at 20, 30 years between Thomas Jefferson and George Washington. Ben Franklin was more George Washington's age. They're just older guys and younger guys all banded together to to fight for America's freedom. But before that, just just a couple decades before that, we, we needed those the English to help us fight the French Indians, the, the French and the Indians and the French Indian Wars through the seventeen fifties and seventeen sixties. And then, and then it just maybe a, a new king got into power and and just changed everything or something. I'm, I'm not sure of the details exactly, but it it really astounds me um, how we how we look at England and the, and the history, kind of like how we pick on the not the the Germans and and their Nazism now. We only know like a little bit about. The, their their cultures and and stuff and the history, just just enough that we can find ways to make fun of them as best we can. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, quite an accomplishment to celebrate for July Fourth. So I mean, I, I'll take take some pride in it. I'd much rather have freedom than England controlling this country.